Good morning. Today's lesson is the mid-chapter checkpoint for chapter 8. Choose the best term from the box to complete the sentence. So there's our terms. A blank is a statement that two mathematical expressions are equal. That would be an equation. Adding 5 and subtracting 5 are inverse operations. So is dividing 5 and multiplying 5, right? Concepts and skills. Write an equation for the word sentence. The sum of a number 4.5 is 8.2. So the sum, so we know we're adding, and the number is going to be the, you know, the n, and 4.5. So we're going to have to take 4.5 plus that, that n, and that's going to give us the is, remember is, is the equal sign, right? The next one says three times the cost is 24. So remember, we're going to do times. So three times something is, which is equals 24. So when you're writing that in an expression, three, and they did C for the cost, equals 24. All right, determine whether the given value of the variable is the solution of the equation. So for this equation, x minus 24 equals 58, we're going to plug in 82 for x. So that means we're going to have oops, 82 minus 24. So 82 minus 24, let's do it over here so it's a little easier, 24. Can't take the 2 from the 4, so I'm going to have to borrow. So this is going to be 12 from 4 is 8. And uh, 7 from 2 is 5, which is 58. So does 82 minus 24 equal 58? And the answer is yes. So this is the solution to the equation. So x does equal 82. Let's look at the next one. So in the next one we have 1 thirds cup equals 3 eighths. And so for the C, we're going to put 3 quarters. So now we have 1 third. And remember whenever a letter is next to a number, it's multiplying. So times, and we're going to fill in for the C, we're filling in this 3 quarters. 3 quarters equals 3 eighths. So now we need to see if this is true. So let's multiply it out. 3 times 1 is 3. And 3 times 4 is 12. Yeah, 3 twelves is not the same thing as 3 eighths. So that is not a solution. Okay, let's continue. Solve the equation and check the solution. So they want us to solve this equation and then check the solution. So whenever we are trying to solve, we want to isolate the variable. Our variable is a. This is adding 2.4, so to get rid of and 2.4, I'm going to do the inverse operation or the opposite. So I'm not going to add 2.4. I'm going to subtract 2.4. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side of the equation. So it is now crossed out. And on this side, I have A equals. And then I have to do my, my subtraction over here. Four, um, 8 minus 4 is 4. Bring down my decimal. 7 minus 2 is 5. So the answer is A equals 5.4. OK, let's look at B. Minus 1 quarter equals 3 and 1 half. So again, I need to isolate my variable. My variable is b. In order to isolate it, I need to get rid of minus 1 fourth. So I'm going to do the inverse, which is plus 1 fourth. Whatever I do, to, and then I can get rid of that. But whatever I do to this side, I have to do this side. So I have to do plus 1 fourth. Now the tricky part on this, so I'm left with b on this side. The tricky part about this is I have 3 and 1 half plus one-fourth. Well, I can't plus the fourth in the half, right? So let me put my three here because we don't need to worry about that. We already have the whole number. But I can't add a half and I can't add a fourth. So I need to find a common denominator. So two can go into four. So I could keep this one the same and then I can make this one be an equivalent fraction, right? In order to make this bottom be a four, I'd have to multiply the bottom by two. Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. So now I have 2 fourths. So now I have 2 fourths plus 1 fourth. And 2 plus 1 is 3. So I'm going to get 3 and 3 fourths. So B equals 3 and 3 fourths. OK? Number 9. We have 3x minus 27. So again, I need to isolate my variable. My variable is this x. Whenever a letter is next to a number, that is multiplication. 
and the inverse or the opposite is going to be division. So if I'm going to get rid of this 3, I'm going to have to divide this by 3. Remember, whatever I do to this side of the equation, I have to do the other side of the equation. So 3 divided by 3 is nothing left with x. And 27 divided by 3 is 9. So x equals 9. Okay, moving on. We have 1 third s um, equals 1 fifth. Again, we're isolating the variable s. The letter is next to the number. So that means that in order to get rid of it, I'm going to have to divide. So if I divide this side by 1 third, then I'm going to have to divide this side by 1 third, right? I know that looks kind of weird because you have a fraction on top of a fraction. We have our 1 third and our 1 third, which is going to go away. So we have our s equals 1 fifth divided by 1 third. Now remember when we're dividing fractions, it's the same thing as multiplying the inverse. So, sorry about that. If I change this sign to a multiplication, so if I say 1 fifth times, then I simply make the inverse of this one, 3 over 1, and then I can multiply across. So now I have 3 times 1, which is 3, 5 times 1, which is 5. So S equals 3 fifths. Whoops. There we go. Okay, let's keep going. We have t over 4 equals 16. Well, on this one, my variable is on top of my number, so that means this is dividing t divided by 4. In order to get rid of that, I'm going to do the inverse, which is multiplying. So I'm going to multiply this side by 4. And remember, whatever I do to this side, I also have to do to this side, so I'm going to multiply this side by 4, right? So I can cross my 4s out. I'm left with t equals and 16 times 4 is 64. So t equals 64. All right, our last one on this page, we have w over 7. Again, that's division. In order to isolate my variable, I have to do the opposite, which is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply this side by 7 so that I can get rid of my 7s. Whatever I do to this side, I have to do this side. So now I have 7 times 0.3. And 7 times 3 is 21, only one decimal space over, so I'm going to move it over right there. So I should have W equals 2.1 as my answer. Change this. Okay, a stadium has a total of 18,000 seats. Of these seats, 7,500 are field seats, and the rest are grandstand seats. Write an equation that could be used to find the number of grandstand seats which would be S, right? So the stadium has the total. So this total right there is telling me that my equal sign is going to be this. That's my total. So of these, that many are field seats and the rest are grandstand seats. So we have this plus whatever my grandstand seats are. So I could just call them S if I want. So my equation should be S plus 7,500 equals that. So I kind of just had it opposite. Remember with addition, you can go either way. All right, next one says, Aaron wants to buy a bicycle that cost $128. So far he has saved $56. The equation A plus 56 equals 128 can be used to find the amount of A in the dollars that Aaron still needs to save. What is the solution of the equation? So let's solve it. We have A plus 56 equals 128. We need to isolate the variable, which is A. If this is plus 56, I need to do the opposite to make the A be alone. So I'm going to subtract my 56. Whatever I do to this side of the equation, I have to do this side of the equation. So now my 56 is gone, and I'm left with A equals. And then let's solve it. Eight, um, eight, 6 take away from 8 is 2. Sorry. I cannot take 2 from 5, so I'm going to have to make borrow, make that be a 12, and I get 7 because 7 plus 5 is 12, so I get A equals 72. All right, Mrs. McNeil uh, buys 2.4 gallons of gasoline. The total cost is $7.56. The equation 2.4P equals 7.56 can be used to find the price or P in dollars of one of the gallons of gas. What is the price of one gallon of gas? So let's solve it. We have the 2.4 P equals 756. We want to isolate our variable. 
Whenever a letter is next to a number, we know it's multiplying, and the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So we're going to divide this side by 2.4. Whatever we do to that side, we're going to have to do to this side, 2.4. So I can cross those out, and I'm left with P equals. So this says 7.56 divided by 2.4. We, long, 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 long time ago, talked about decimals, right? So if we have a decimal on the outside, we need to move it over to make this a whole number. Whatever we do to the outside, how many ever times, we need to move that one over. So now my decimal is going to be right here. Uh, 24 goes into 75. Well, that's kind of like a quarter, right? So three times. That's how I'm going to guess it. So we've got 24 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7, so we get 72. I subtract. Um, 5 from 2 is going to be 3. Now I'm going to bring down my 6. Now I've got 24 going to 36. Well, 24 times 2 is 48, so that's just going to be too much. So we're going to say 1 time, 24. I subtract. Um, I get 6. I get 2. I get 12. I can add a 0 here. 24 goes into 120. It goes in five times, whoops, five times, because so we've got 24 times five, just, just to make sure. Four times five is 20, five times two is 10, plus two is 12, so it goes in evenly, 120 with nothing left over. So my answer to this one is $3.15, which is a good thing, it moved kind of out of my way there. Last problem before we actually take our test today. Crystal is picking blueberries. So far she has filled two thirds of her basket and the blueberries weigh three quarter pounds. The equation two third W equals three quarter can be used to estimate the weight in pounds of the blueberries when the basket is full. About how much will the blueberries in Crystal's basket weigh when it is full? All right, so let's solve. We've got two thirds of the weight and the whole total is gonna equal three quarters pound. So I need to isolate my variable, which is W. Um, whenever a letter is next to a number, it is um, multiplying. So we need to divide both sides by 2 thirds. I know that looks kind of weird. Okay. So whatever, obviously, whatever I do to this side, I have to, the right side, I have to do the left side. So now I can get rid of that. And I'm left with 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds. Remember that whenever you're... Dividing fractions is the same thing as multiplying the inverse. So we can take 3 quarters, change this sign into a multiplication sign, and then we have to do the inverse. So this is going to be 3 over 2, and now I can go straight across. 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 2 is 8. So 9 eighths, whenever there's a big number on the top, they usually, especially on those SBAC tests, like you to make it an improper fraction or not an improper fraction, because that's what this is. They want you to make it into a mixed number fraction. So eight goes into nine one time with one left over. So we're gonna have eight, uh, one and one eighth. Whoops. Um, so it's one and one eighth pounds. All right, so study hard. I know you're gonna do great, and I look forward to seeing how you do on your test. Good luck.